I want you guys to think about the biggest decision you've ever had to make in your entire life. For some people, that might be whether you're ready to get married, whether you're ready to have kids, if you want to buy a boat or a car, maybe that down payment on your house, or maybe it's a job change in a new city. What is the biggest decision you've ever had to make? Now, with that decision in mind, I want you to imagine having to make the decision of whether to stay on earth or to go to the great beyond. I know, literally crazy. It's almost unimaginable. But if you've had a near-death experience, chances are you might have been asked that question. Now, some people who have these near-death experiences will be asked the question straight up, do you want to go back? Some people are told, hey, you're not done with your fulfillment on earth. You need to go back and finish living your earthly life. And some people aren't even given that choice, they're just slammed back into their body. I know it might be a little challenging to kind of wrap your head around it, but lucky for you, I have a firsthand account of a near-death experience, and we're so excited to share it with you guys. But first, we have a pressing matter we must attend to, and that is our episode three quiz. Now, I know you guys probably thought I'd forget, but I never forget anything. So, I have three questions for you, and if you can answer them, then you won the prize, and the prize is that you're a good quiz taker, and if you can't answer any of them, then you need to go back and listen to our last two podcasts, and if you can answer some of them, then you still have to go back and listen to our last two podcasts. Here are the questions I have for you. First of all, what is an NDE? I need you to tell me what that acronym stands for. Second, I'd love for you to tell me what IANS acronym stands for. I-A-N-D-S. What does that stand for? And lastly, what was the movie I insisted you watch in the last episode? Now, I won't make you recite the songs, but what was the movie? Now, if you got all those questions right, then you are a true Bright Lights Beyonder. If you didn't get any right, then you need to really go back and watch our last episodes. But now that we have our quiz out of the way, I'm so excited to tell you what we have next. So my best friend of 10 plus years reached out to me after watching our podcast and told me that her dad actually had a near-death experience. And I am so excited to share with you his story. Now, for reasons that I can totally understand, he'd like to remain anonymous. So I'm going to give him the acronym of AD. And so that's what we're going to refer to him as. I'm going to tell you the story of AD. And it also has some clips for you that you can hear him telling his own story. So first of all, a little background. So this happened to AD when he was around 60 years old. Now he's originally from Chihuahua, Mexico, and he has Bergata syndrome. So that's a gene mutation that can affect your heart. And a lot of people who have this have to undergo surgery to monitor their heart. Well, I went for a testing and during the procedure that they were going to perform, they needed to test my heart. So that's why they went to do a test on my heart because they found out that I have a, a heart condition and they needed to test my heart to see if I was able to withstand the uh, surgery procedure they were going to perform. So I believe it was after his surgery that he had to undergo some stress test. So when he was on the gurney, they wheeled him into this room. And he says that when he was in that room, he remembers that the tests that they were doing were very painful and he could feel his heart beating so, so fast. And it was just really uncomfortable for him. The stress test was to push the heart kind of artificially. And when when they were doing the test, I could feel uh, like my heart was hurting. I felt pain. And then my heart was, you know, going out of, you know, very, very fast, beating very, very, fast and I could feel it and I could feel the pain and then stop just like psh. and all of a sudden his heart stops he's pronounced dead he says as soon as his heart stopped he was no longer in pain he remembers that the pain was just gone instantly and he enters this realm of just peacefulness and tranquility what I felt was that I, like uh, everything stopped the pain stopped everything nothing and it was just very, very peaceful. And then I went like almost into a very, very bright area or not necessarily a room, but a lot of light, very bright light. 
he remembers seeing this beautiful bright light. Now he says this is the brightest light he's ever seen in his life, just overwhelmingly glorious light. And he says that it's quiet and it's peaceful. And he feels a sensation of floating towards that light. Now he describes this light as like literally the brightest light he's ever seen in his life. And I can only from my own experience just kind of think about what, what it's like to like look into like the spotlight or look into like the light of a super super bright LED. But he's describing this like crazy brilliant white light and so he sees this light and he has this feeling of floating towards it i'm like at this point you're literally having a near-death experience but so he's floating towards the light and all of a sudden he looks down and he's above his own body he sees himself on the table and he sees the nurse trying to jostle him awake and he is physically floating above his body bright very bright light you know almost like into a very bright room with a very bright light it was not from darkness to light it was just like i was like almost woke up into this very bright light you know like pulling me then i kind of came back to the room like i could see myself down on the journey and, uh, and like at the same time i could see the nurse calling me then i could hear started hearing things like you know calling my name but it's almost like uh, coming back very 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 quiet peaceful you know very bright light until i woke up and then she was calling me and i don't know if she was hitting me a little bit on the face or something but she was calling me and i was first i was seeing that and then i woke up not scared not afraid not nothing it was just i don't know how can i describe very very peaceful very bright light and um and i was almost like a lion or floating towards the light you don't think that you're dead die or nothing you're just feeling i remember kind of looking over above myself and the nurse and then I, I started hearing when she was shaking me and then I woke up. So the thing that I found most interesting about AD's story in particular was what was happening while he was in the quote unquote beyond. Basically the thing that stuck with me was the calmness that he said he felt. I find that so reassuring to hear that the calmness is kind of what was the over overwhelming sensation that he had. And it was kind of paired with light. And like I said, it was kind of a renewed faith for him too, because it really made him feel like there was something more than you know, death. It's almost like I came out. One moment I was kind of floating and then the next moment I was already awakened. All of a sudden, that bright light stops and he's slammed back into his body. He is not asked a question in this realm, but he is just thrown back into his body. And from there, they got his heart to start working again and he was alive. But that was his near-death experience. Isn't that so crazy? Something that I was so interested in is that I guess you kind of assume when it's a near-death experience that it's some crazy thing that happens to them like their car flipped seven times or like we've said before they were on the operating table and it was just this like huge thing and the fact that ad's was with a stress test on his heart and that's something that is a really scary thing to go into but for something so life-changing to come out of it and obviously it's affected his life and it's kind of brought him this new sense of hope for his future and i just think that it's just so cool and that's why I love this Bright Lights Beyond experiment of us learning these things and talking about them and hearing real people's stories because it's just just so crazy. Now on top of his just physical near-death experience we kind of asked him about how his life changed and if he had any kind of takeaways from this experience that he could share with us and he gave us some really good information and I think it's really important and powerful that we listen to what AD was saying because as someone who's experienced this firsthand. I don't know if that without this experience, he'd have the same outlook on life. And it just really goes to show you that these experiences, whether big, small, really make an impact on your life. Well, you know, being a Christian person that believes in God, you know, that kind of tells you that something beautiful out there, the stronger beliefs that it's a God, something else, yes, very powerful. We asked him if he was afraid of death. Was he scared when he was in this light? A lot of people are very afraid of dying, of death, because, you know, we don't know what it is. I would tell you, you should never be afraid of dying. I don't know how to describe it. Something out there is better. We asked him if he had changed significantly after having this experience. Not at that moment, but as years went by, you know, he started realizing that it's, you know, you have to take life every day to the max because you never know when you're going to go. So in a sense, it was a little bit of a taste that life is too short. And there's some something out there, some God, something very powerful out there. 
So it is not every day that you get to talk about something that you've never experienced and I know Lexi's never experienced and then get to listen to someone who's actually experienced it and listen to them tell their story and basically kind of get a real life sense of how these things happen. I also find it interesting that it took him some time after his experience to kind of let it settle in him. And it wasn't just like instantly he had this like awakening, but he kind of had to, you know, go through the experience and then kind of dawned on him what happened to him and everything that kind of followed that is very interesting. And that's probably part of that evolution of like you figure out things, not necessarily when they are facing you, but when you need them the most. So maybe a little bit after the experience, it was something that he like needed and he he was like, oh my gosh, yes, this happened. And this is why it's important to my life now. And I just think that's amazing. And I'm so happy we got to listen to AD. It's something that I definitely needed to hear. And I feel like our listeners also will want to hear because sometimes if you have somebody talking about it that hasn't experienced it, it's a little more like theoretical and like philosophical in a weird way because we don't have any frame of reference. I mean, of course we all deal with death and mortality. Um, but if you've never directly experienced it, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can hear it in his voice, what it really meant to him and what it meant to his life. And I just found it so fascinating and I'm just so happy that they were able to speak with us and that this is something that changed his life for the better and that he seems like he's doing really well and I hope his heart is doing amazing and yeah I'm just so thankful that we get this incredible guest and to hear his story. It was just so amazing to hear AD's story. I mean I just don't think I could put it into words how many goosebumps I got just listening to what he was saying and just to know that like he's been to that other realm and he knows for a fact that life is too short to take anything for granted but at the end of the day that there is something much bigger than ourselves and I think that really gives perspective to a lot of different things that we have going on. I also just want to say that I think it's super amazing that he has this newfound way of looking at life and that is just kind of what it's all about is that you take away what you can from these near-death experiences and this is something that he took away that he shared with his own kids and he's sharing with all of you guys now and so it's just so insanely special that we get to hear his message because that's kind of what it all is about is really having these near-death experiences and then what to do with them and it's to help people so I just want to thank him again and I just absolutely love that last sentiment that he shared with us that you know all of this was for a reason now I know in the beginning of this episode we kind of touched on a question now in 80s case he wasn't necessarily asked any questions he was just put back in his body. But like I touched on earlier, that is a facet of near-death experiences that really, really strikes something in me to be asked this question whether you want to return to your earthly body or to go on to the great beyond. Now, in some cases, you're not asked. Like AD, he was just put back in his body. But in some cases, you are asked, like, are you ready to move on? Or do you still have priorities that you need to take care of on Earth? I mean, I can't even imagine that question and I can't even imagine what it's like to answer that question. But some people who have these near-death experiences do have to answer those questions. And so it just leaves me thinking, what would you do if you were in that circumstance? Like, I know we can't really explain it and all we can do is kind of go off of other people's explanations. And like I was saying and like Marina was saying in the last episode, that it's really hard to describe this to people who haven't had near-death experiences. But like, if you were given that question, what would you choose? I don't know what I would do because apparently when you're in that state, you're just overcome with like love and light. I also think it's very unique that AD wasn't asked this question and he was just told to kind of go back on earth. Now, AD is a father of three and he's a grandfather and he has a business and he has a wife and he has dogs and he has all of these things that he has to go back and tend to. So I wonder if that had any reasoning why this great being put him back in his body or maybe his story isn't done being written and he needed us to hear it he needed other people to hear it to kind of understand or make his story make sense or you know I mean there's so many different reasons why he's here right now but I just think it's so special that we got to listen to him and talk to him and I just have so so many more questions I think but I just 
really am lucky to get to share that with you guys. And I just can't thank AD enough and his family for opening up his story and really talking to us about it. So that is just one thing that I wanted to think about. And I want you guys to think about kind of like, what would your answer be? Or would you even get a choice? There are tons of other near-death experiences where people are just thrown back in their bodies or they're given a choice. And I just think it's so cool to ponder on whether you'd stay or you'd go, you know? I also think it's just so cool that AD got to see himself like floating above himself. Like I just can't imagine that. I mean, I guess I can imagine it, but I just, it's so, it's just so fascinating. And that's just kind of something I wanted to touch on today. Like this big question, like how would you answer it? Sometimes we're not even given the question, but how would you answer it if this happened to you tomorrow? And that's something I want to leave you guys with. So remember to like, remember to follow, remember to share our podcast. And if you have anybody who's experienced this, or if you're a medical professional, or if you just want to talk about this, please reach out on our website. Please reach out on our Instagram. We are so happy to engage with you guys. It's just so amazing that we're all here together. And I just hope that these stories and these different questions and all the things that we can ponder really help you just think about death in a different way because I know that every research that I do, every guest I have on, everything that I look at, and even just with talking with you guys, like it just changes the way I think about something that can be so dark and I'm just so excited to continue this journey. So thank you guys so much and remember to live life beyond.